But as you can see, to start off with, we're starting off with, as we said, uh, dispensing 101. And we're going to start right from basics, very basics. So if you know nothing about lenses, you're in the right lecture. Right. Let's just go, let's start off over here. The World Council of Optometry, a member of the World Health Organization, defines optometrists as primary healthcare practitioners of the eye and visual system who provide comprehensive eye and vision care, which includes the refraction and dispensing. Now, as you can see here, we are not discussing visual systems or refraction. We are doing dispensing. Detect, um, detection, diagnosis, and management of disease in the eye, and the rehabilitation of conditions of the visual system. So my topic here is the dispensing. And I'm sure you'll realize just how important dispensing is. And if you don't know what lenses are or the characteristics of lenses, it's just going to make your job that much more difficult. Now, why I say that is, you might think, okay, I can prescribe anything I like and prescribe it and that's it. The normal run of the mill, there's no problem. But where the problem comes is when you get difficult cases, difficult prescriptions, and isometropic patients, high prescriptions, you pick up problems. But if you don't know the characteristics of the lenses, it just makes your job that much more difficult. So that's why what we're going to dis uh, discuss today we're going to do lens type. Now, what I mean by lens type, it's a lens material, glass or plastic. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with glass or plastic. It's not rocket science. We're going to discuss refractive index, and that we've, uh, <clears throat> and that, uh, that's got to do with lens thickness. Constringence. Now, when I talk about constringence, I'm referring to V value, Abbey value, uh, basically what this is, it's the optical quality of the lens. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with that. Okay, okay, okay. I see someone's baby is also interested in this topic. <laughs> Maybe the baby can answer the MCQs afterwards. Okay. <laughs> because these MCQ questions are very difficult, I can assure you. Anyone who passes first time, good luck. Right, now we're talking about constringence. This is when we talk about the V value, Abbey value, basically it's the optical quality. And what we refer to optical quality, it's your chromatic aberration. I'll get more involved with this uh, when we get uh, onto that topic. We're going to talk about the density, that's the weight, that's your grams per cubic centimeter. Curve variation factor, this relates to refractive index. Light transmission, and that includes reflect, uh, reflection. And of course, your UV um, transmission or UV absorption, um, that's basically the radiation that refers to. Well, we all know that um, the hype now is UV protection and all of that. So we're going to discuss the basic lens types first. And if you don't really know the characteristics of each lens, then as far as I'm concerned, it just makes your job that much more difficult, especially when it comes to problem solving. Right. Here is a table over here. Um, summarizing everything that I've just mentioned in the previous slide. Now, lens type. These are all the lens types that are available in the industry at the moment. Crown glass. Now, I know not many people are prescribing crown glass at the moment. You get barium glass, high index. Your plastics, your ordinary CR39. Trivex, your mid-index. Polycarbonates, high index also. And of course, um, the extra high index in plastic. And next to it, we've got our refractive indices. Now, crown glass, we're all familiar with, is 1.523. And your mid index here in glass, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, and 1.9. Now, 1.9, I think it's only available upon request. Not many of the labs 
um, prescribed 1.9, not available in your lab. Maybe on special Maybe request. Maybe on special request. Yes. Now, something important. I've actually had inquiries about the 1.7. Now, 1.7 is something that sticks out. That's glass. That's glass, yeah. Where I've had requests from certain optometrists, okay, that they didn't know um, it was this material, where some doctors, they, um, they do x-rays and they need protection against the x-rays. Now, you can get the 1.7 glass material. While we're on this, um, I thought, let me just mention it. You can get the 1.7. It's heavy. Um, um, it's got a heavy lead content. And it's the lead content that basically absorbs the x-rays. Now, these are also available upon request. So, um, if ever you get um, someone who, who works in a for a radiologist or in the radiography department requesting uh, protection uh, from the x-rays, there is a 1.7 index, but this might also be um, x overseas. But they've made one year. I don't know if you can remember, um, especially the older people, sorry, no pun intended, you either. Um, you will remember um, the high index glass used to be so heavy and uh, because of the lead content. Now they've actually changed the material of the 1.7, where there's less lead, and now it's got lanthanum in it, which makes it not as heavy, and um, there's less lead. But the, the material prior to this, it used to be, um, <clears throat> the content used to be um, quite heavily loaded with lead, and that's the material I'm referring to, because, um, that works well for people working with x-rays. 1.8, 1.9. But glass is not um, offered in prescribed. No, no that's, that's correct. But this is be for the special, special needs for x-rays. Uh, so it's more of an occupational material than a general wear. But there are still plenty of people that prescribe glass. Although... Plastic is now the main thing. Now, if we go to our plastic materials, normal CR39, 1.49. Then you've got your Trivex material, 1.530. Now, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this material. So, um, I'm going to repeat quite a lot um, in this um, lecture. Um, all of you should really know um, what's special about Trivex and about the refractive index? Well, it's more the material than the refractive index. Now, we all know that Trivex is uh, a high-impact resistant material and it's used in safety glasses. You get your mid-index, 1.56. Polycarbonate now is also another material that sort of sticks out. It's got a refractive index of 1.586. And also high impact resistant, and also used in safety glasses. But we'll get to the, the quality of the material later on. Then you've got your 1.6, your 1.67, and your 1.704. Now, as an optometrist, personally, I feel you should know what is available. Now, it's all very well knowing the availability if you don't know what the availability is, it might make your job a bit more difficult. But we all know it's easy phoning up the lab and say, hey, what should I do here? And then you get advice from the lab. But that might not always be the best advice. Well, depending on the, how knowledgeable your lab is, and I don't mean this in any disrespectful way, because it's all very, very well choosing a certain index. But each index... It's got its own characteristics. Now, let's have a look here at the constringents. Now, when we refer to constringents, we are referring to the chromatic aberration. Now, the higher the value, the less the chromatic aberration. Now, if I can just go one slide over here, no, not that one there. Oh, I'll get to it now. Now, the higher the value, the better the optical quality, 
and the less the chromatic aberration. Now you get your barium flint over here. Now you can see as the index increases, the constringence decreases. So in other words, the chromatic aberration increases. You've got 1.742 and um, you get your 1.8, which is 32, and your 1.929. So as you can see, now this is in your glass over here, the higher the index, the worse the optical quality, the more the chromatic aberration. I'll get into aberration in a bit more detail. So let's go through this first, and then we can, um, then I can explain to you how this affects the optical quality or even vision through these lenses. Then we've got our CR39. It's got a constringence or AB value or uh, V value, new value, whatever you want to call it, 58, which is very similar to crown glass. You get your Travex, which is 1.530. This has got an AB value of roughly 45. Now, this is your high impact resistance. Compare that to your polycarbonate. Also high impact, used for safety glasses, but your Travex, the optical quality is, um, is more superior compared to your polycarbonates. So that means vision through a Travex is much better than vision through uh, a polycarbonate. Now, you may be asking me, how is this so? I will explain to you later on. I'll get to that just now. Then you've got your mid-index, 156. It's about a 36. You've got your high index, 1.6, 1.67. And, of course, your Nikon, um, 1.704, um, which is 33. But as you can see again, the higher the index, the lower the V value, the more the chromatic aberration. While we're on this, let me just go back. I'm going to have to go two slides over here. Sorry, we. Sorry, I'm going to go back with. Um... No, it's not. Okay, we talk about chromatic aberration. We are referring to the split of the different colors. So now, the higher the <clears throat> higher the the Abbey value, the smaller this angle the split between your red and your blue. And the lower the Abbey value, the greater this angle. So it will be more noticeable. So that's when we talk about Abbey values and the optical quality of the lens. Um, I'll show you later on in the graph how this affects the vision. Right. Any questions in the meantime? If you have any questions, just type them in and um, I'll do my best to answer. Then we come to density. That's basically your weight. It's grams per cubic centimeter. Now, crown glass over here is 2.54. Now, the way they measure density, they take, um, they take uh, uh, a cubic centimeter of water. And a cubic centimeter of water happens to weigh one, uh, one gram. So now they do that with the materials. So one cubic um, centimeter of crown glass weighs 2.54. And as we go higher in refractive index in glass, you can see how the weight increases. Now you might think that, um, okay, I'm using less glass um, with high index lenses, but that has no effect on the weight the weight still remains the same, 3.65 grams per cubic centimeter. So it's pretty straightforward over here. Higher the index, the heavier the lens. Uh, we come to our plastics. Uh, ordinary CR39 is 1.32. You can see it's approximately half the weight of crown glass. Uh, your Travex is 1.12. Mid index 1.23, polycarbonate 1.2, uh, high index 1.36, 167, 136, and your Nikon over here 1.46. Now you can see there's not really much difference in your in um, in your weight with regard to your high index materials in plastic. So it's negligible, so it doesn't really make any difference, but it makes a big difference in glass. 
comparing 1.5 to 3 to 1.9, we're probably looking at nearly double the weight. But um, as previously mentioned, we're not really using um, much glass lately. Right, now it comes to your curve variation factor, okay? Now, when we compare curves and um, thicknesses and everything, we take glass as a reference, crown glass. Now, what I mean by that is if we want to make a lens of power one diopter, and if you're working on thin lens theory, the power of the lens is a combination of the front and back surface. So let's assume the one surface is plano, and to make a, 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 um, a glass lens that gives the power of, of one diopter, you'll have a curvature of one diopter on the other side. So it's plano plus one gives you one. Now, we now use our high index material. So to make a power of one, we're going to have to put a curve on 0.087. So you can see over there, there's about a 13% difference um, in curvature and also thickness. You go to a 1.7, you're only going to use a 0.75 curve. So that's a 25% uh, difference in curvature and thickness. You go to your 1.8, you're going to put a 0.65 curve, which is what? That is 35% thinner than ordinary crown glass. It has become flatter, less curved. Yes, less curved. Less curved, but gives you the same power. And if you go to your 1.9, it's 0.58 uh, curvature that will give you a plus one diopter. So you can see there, you've got about a 42% difference um, in curvature and also in thickness. Now, as we all know, not many people are using glass. <laughs> but the same thing applies with plastic. Let's look at your plastic. Now, plastic has a refractive index of 1.49. Now, that is slightly, um, um, if you're looking at this over here, it's lighter, and the refractive index is slightly um, lower than the crown glass, Okay. Now, if you take in your curve variation factor over here, um, plastic is going to be a bit thicker. So to make a one diopter lens in plastic, you'd have to put a curvature here of 1.06. So, okay, 1.06 doesn't really make much of a difference if your, power is, um, if your power is low. But as your powers get higher, you'll notice your plastics will be uh, marginally thicker than crown glass. However, your weight is going to be half the weight. So ordinary CR39 in general is slightly thicker than, um, than crown glass. Your Trivex over here with a refractive index of 1.530, uh, your curve over here, you'd have to put a 0.98, which is actually very close to ordinary CR39, ordinary close to ordinary glass. So there's not much of a, of a thickness difference between the two. Go to your mid-index 1.56, you got a curve there to give you a plus one would be 0.93. Uh, 1.586, you can see you got an 11% difference in curvatures. So it will be roughly 11% thinner. But disadvantage over here is, if you're looking at your, um, where are we? If you're looking at your Abbey value over here, you're 31. So it's got a, a, a very high degree of chromatic aberration. Now, if we go to our 1.6, which is 0.86 curvature, it's about a 14%. You go to your 167, which is a 0.78, which is a 22% difference. And your 1.704, you can see over here, it's got a 0.71 curve. So that's nearly a 30% difference in curvature and, of course, in thickness. So that's what we mean by curve variation factor. That's related to refractive index. So the higher um, the refractive index, the less the curvature that's needed, and of course, the thinner the lens is going to be. But obviously, you know this, most of you know this, so uh, maybe you forgot about it, but um, 
if you wanted to work out, um, patients might ask you, well, how much thinner will my lens be? If you had to go to the table over here, you can say, right, if you read in uh, CR39 and I give you now uh, index of 1.6, you're looking at maybe 14% thinner. So it's a rough estimate. Now, if you want to do a proper calculation and say, right, the thickness now is going to be 2.386 millimeters, that means nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it gives you a good indication as to how thin, because often people will come in and you offer high index lenses, they're going to ask you two questions. How much thinner will the lens be and how much is it going to cost? They go hand in hand. And sometimes you'll find, and something I find kind of interesting, you take a 167 and you take a 1.704 you have somewhere around maybe a six or seven percent difference in thickness, but the difference in price is quite astronomical. Now, this is where you have to now, uh, you now have to now make a, a choice. What do I give him? Do I give him the 167 or do I give him the 174? So, does the thickness different warrant the price? Now, I'm not in private practice, so it's easy for me to talk. And of course, why are we all in practice? We are here to serve the community. Put back into the community for what they've done for you. Don't rip them off. Oh, I'm only joking there, sorry. Uh, but you must now make that judgment. Does the price warrant the difference in thickness? You can make that choice yourself. So, what we're showing you over here is just the different characteristics of the different materials and how one differs from the other. And now we come to the transmissions. For crown glass 1.5 to 3, you are losing 8.4% just due to reflection. So out of 100% of light that uh, is entered, you've got, uh, you're losing 8.2%. Uh, just due to reflection. I'm ignoring absorption, because uh, absorption doesn't really play a part with lenses um, so thin. So this is only due to reflection. Now, as the higher the index, the less the transmission and um, <clears throat> more the reflection. Now you go to your, uh, let's go to extremes now, 1.9 you're losing nearly 20% of light just due to reflection. Go to your 1.8, there you're losing what? Um, just over 15%. That's through the whole lens, through the front surface and the back surface. So obviously, by losing so much light, what everyone does is they would put an anti-reflex coating on, especially on your high index where you're losing so much light due to reflection. And when it comes to night driving, it's even worse because you have less, less light entering and your transmission is even less. So obviously it's imperative that you put AR coatings on, especially your, your high index. Now the same thing is going to apply. On your ordinary CR39, because it's a lower index, you're probably gaining close to a percentage more light being trans, uh, transmitted. It won't be that noticeable uh, if you're comparing glass to plastic. But uh, these are just facts, uh, figures that I'm showing you. Now, your Trivex, you got 91.2, not much of a difference. But as the index increases, the transmission decreases. So, um, transmission is refractive index dependent. So, don't think plastic, you're going to have less transmission because it's plastic. It's all related to your refractive index. No, the, the transmission. The transmission. Density over here is basically your weight. So there's very little difference in your weight with regard to your plastics. But there's a big difference with your glass. And when it comes to your transmission, it's all refractive index dependent. Can you see that? And now it comes to your UV cutoffs. So from 1.6, you should put on an ARC. Well, you know, 
personally speaking, in my opinion, I prefer AR coatings on any lens. On any lens. But a lot of it depends on what the patient can afford. So if a person asks me, I'm actually an AR coating fan, and I'll put AR coatings on everything. Now, people might ask me, why do you do that? Why would you put an AR coating on all your lenses other than your high index? Now, the way I explain it is, well, first of all, if you've got a good AR coating, you've got a good hard coating. So your AR coating has got an added feature that it's got a good hard coating and it transmits more light. And I think that is what some people don't seem to, to mention. It's easy, well, when I say easy, if you promote your hard coating on top of your um, AR coating, it's getting an added feature where the lenses are more scratch resistant. Now, I know what a lot of uh, clinicians do, and I've seen it. They only talk about the AR coating, about more light going through and less reflections, but an added feature here is the hard coating. If you're comparing it to an uncoated lens, okay, I know you're paying for it, but I mean, but it's an added feature. And if you mention that, then the patient might think twice or might not even think twice and say, all right, give it to me. But the good thing is to know with AR coatings, what makes a good AR coating is your hard coating. You have a bum hard coating, you're going to have a bum AR coating. And all um, our um, AR coatings also has a UV built in. So you're getting to the UV. That's not necessarily, yeah? No, not all. But not all. BBGR and Codex. Now, another thing is, um, uh, I don't know... Um, I informed you all with regard to the UV, which I'm going to get to now. Um, one would think that if you, and I'm going slightly off the subject now with transmissions and AR coatings, um, one would think that um, an AR coated, an AR coated lens, now I'm talking about a stock lens now, would have a UV protection. That's not the case. I mean, I've done, I've done tests on all these lenses, and there are certain lenses where um, you've got your AR coating, but the UV, there's no UV coating on it. It has to be specified. No, it's not. No, it doesn't. No. no. But the ARC has to be specified that it has a UV or not. Not in the stock lens, no. Oh, no, 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 no. no, stock no I'm talking stock. I'm talking uh, stock lens. Yeah. Uh, sorry, in case you um, missed this part, I'm deferring to stock lenses now. I'm deferring to stock lenses. Now, these are off-the-shelf stock lenses that um, all these wholesalers supply. And I took samples from quite a few labs. And um, if you're thinking of some top names and you're thinking of premium product, they do not have a UV coating on it. Surprise, surprise. And that's your top of the range. And yet I can get an El Cheapo that's got a UV coating on it. Okay, but the AR coating may not be as good, but it's got a UV coating on it. Right, so just for the record over there, this is your transmission here. Uh, I know I went slightly off the subject with AR coatings, but I think it was a good thing just to mention. And now we get our UV cutoffs. With your crown glass, um, there are some crown glass lenses that only cuts out up to 280. And there are some crown glass lenses that cut out up to 310. Now, your UVB is between 280 and 320. But not all glass lenses cut out UVB. It transmits roughly... 20% uh, of UVB and 70% of UVA. Now, as you can see, as the index increases, um, your 1.6 is over here, they cut out all your UVB and it transmits roughly somewhere around 60 to 70% of UVA. Now, if you look at these, um, um, these figures over here with your 1.7, 1.8, these are approximate figures. You can see they're approximately the same. So it's cutting out your UVB, but not, uh, but not your UVA. But on the plastics, it's different. Your plastic lenses cuts out 
up to 350 nanometers. That's cutting out all of the UV, uh, UVB and it's transmitting approximately 20% of UVA. Now, if we can go with the higher index, now that's 360, and it's cutting out all of the, in fact, all these lenses are cutting out all of UVB, and the amount of UVA that's been transmitted is negligible. Now, when you talk about how far does UVA go up to, it varies between 390 and 400. Now, if this is cutting out everything up to 380 or even 370, the amount of UVA that's going through is so negligible, um, my opinion, you don't even need a UV, a UV coating. But that the same applies if you take an ordinary CR39. The amount of UVA that's going through is negligible. But um, I'm just pointing out facts over here. Um, if you want to have complete UV coatings, that's, that's your choice. But um, I'm just <coughs> making a point here. So our UV coatings are on the back surface for light? For no, UV. normally your UV coatings is dipped. <laughs> it's on the front and back. Not in the ARC. Huh? No, it's not. I'll show you. A, a, you can't. It can't be. I'll show it to you. You can't. <laughs> it can't. You can't only have a UV coating on one surface. It's a dip coat. And it penetrates from both. Well, show me. Okay. It's, uh, it's an education for me. Perfect. <laughs> so I don't know how they can only put it on the one surface. Why would they only put it on the one surface? I'll ask. Uh, okay, fine. Now, what can you argue with you? I'm not aware of that. I thought it was just in the lens itself. Okay. Right. So now that you know the characteristics of the lenses, now it comes to lens choice. When it comes to lens choice, depending on your powers, now, these are your options. These are your options over here of what is available. And um, it's all very well choosing a certain index, but it's also good to know the characteristics that um, each lens has. Now, what I want to show you over here is now the significance of an Abbey number. Now, as you can see over here at the bottom along the X over here, that's your power, okay? Now, and the lens power is in diopters. Now, if you see the threshold for an ordinary plastic lens is 1.501, uh, 1.705. These are your thresholds, the line going over there. And I'm going to get to these, um, what they're talking about over here. And your polycarbonate, your threshold, is way up there. Now, what that means is at 15 degrees, that's 15 degrees I rotation, no material causes any noticeable change in the transverse chromatic aberration. Now, when we talk about transverse chromatic aberration, that means if you rotate in your eye, approximately 15 degrees. You are not looking through the optical center, and that means you're inducing a bit of prism, and when we talk about transverse chromatic aberration, it's actually um, um, also transmatic, uh, prismatic effect, oh, wait, so let me rephrase it, it's chromatic aberration that's basically off-axis. You get two types of chromatic aberration. You get longitudinal, which is along the optical axis, and you get transverse, which is oblique. So now, any power under four diopters is no really noticeable change as far as the transverse chromatic aberration is concerned. So it's not really going to affect uh, vision at all. And the same thing, no material causes a loss in vision, visual acuity, under six diopters. But now if you have a look over here, up to six, you can see the thresholds over there, 1.5. Now, um, as you move your eye away from the optical center, you are inducing more chromatic aberration. So if you see over here at 15 degrees, that's equal to about 7.5 millimeter radius. So that's about nearly 15 millimeter diameter 
from the, the optical center, that's about 80% of your visual function. So you take a power from six diopters over here. Now you can see you've reached the threshold over there for CR39. But now if you go to your higher indices, you are now passing the threshold for, for, for transverse chromatic aberration. And if you go to the higher index, it's even worse. Uh, when I say higher indices, I'm talking about, sorry, uh, lower Abbey values. So what I'm saying here, any uh, transverse chromatic aberration greater than 0 0.16 prism diopters can cause a vision uh, deterioration from 6, 6, 6 to about 6.75. Did you hear what I said there? Depending on the power of the lens and depending on the, the Abbey value, now you can see with polycarbonate, with the threshold over there, if you're talking about normal threshold around there, now with the power of minus six, um, uh, if you see over there with the refractive index of 1.705, you got a VA of 6.75 threshold. Uh, so that means um, oblique gaze. You're inducing more than 0.16 um, diopters of transverse chromatic aberration. And that can cause a one-line reduction in VA. So you can see how Abbey values affect visual acuity. Basically, refractive indexes. Abbey values. Isn't that but they're related, yes. they're related, yes. yes. But not necessarily. Polycarbonate has an Abbey value of 30, and that index is less yeah. than 1.6. Mm -hmm. So you have already look at the Abbey value more than the refractive index. Although, generally speaking, your Abbey value is... Um, uh, is your test here as far as chromatic aberration is concerned. So now, and where this plays a big part also, especially at night, um, some patients may complain that vision isn't as good depending on what material they are wearing. So the important thing now, whenever a lab brings out um, a new lens, the first thing you ask, all oh, right, that's nice, what is the Abbey value? So lens thickness and uh, Not Abbey thickness, value, Abbey no, no, value. but lens thickness and Abbey value needs to be weighed when you decide on the index of the, for the patient. Well, see, there's also other things involved. Yeah. Now, sure. now you're going to look at impact resistance. Now, I'm just going back to this slide over here. Sorry, myself and um, Belinda are having a conversation over here, and maybe if you feel you want to join in, feel free to do so. Um, if you're looking at your Travex, Travex and polycarbonate are the most impact-resistant materials that are available. Travex has an Abbey value of 45. Polycarbonate, 31. They're both impact-resistant, but Travex optical quality is better. Your Travex optical quality is more crisper than your polycarbonate. See what I'm saying? So not necessarily refractive index. You've got to look at the Abbey value because the material itself uh, determines what the Abbey value is. Does that make sense? Yes. I, I was just referring to if you're going to put someone either in a 1.6 or a 1.67, you need to think of the Abbey value as a trade-off versus the, yes. the thinness of the lenses. And the price. Yes. Okay, so let's ignore price for now, mm. because price is something different. Look at your optical quality, 32, 36, not much of a difference. But there's probably a gain there in your thickness. Mm. So the point I'm making over here is probably twofold. The one is look at your thickness, look at your Abbey value, and of course, maybe threefold. Look at your price difference. Because uh, I, I often think of, right, do I give a 167 or do I give a 174? Your 167 is much cheaper, but your 174 is fractionally thinner, but does the difference in thickness warrant the price? 
You understand what I'm saying? That would be for the, the clinician to decide. The same thing going over here. Do I go one five eight six or do I go one six? Obviously, you would only prescribe uh, your polycarbonate if it's if it's for impact resistance. But an important thing to remember while we on the topic, uh, when it comes to rimless fitting, not advisable to use ordinary CR thirty nine unless the lens is thick enough. But if the lenses are quite thin, your 1.6 tensile strength is not as good as polycarbonate or Trivex. But if you take in your tensile strength, now when I talk about tensile strength, you know, uh, I can't draw over here, but if you draw two holes in a lens and you put two pins in it and you pull them apart, if Polycarbonate was your um, your reference, and we'll make that 10. Your 1.6 is somewhere around 7. So under normal circumstances, you fit in a rimless or even a nylon frame with 1.6. Yeah. It's good enough, yes, absolutely. Now, if you are fitting polycarbonate or Trivex, it's good. Your frame will break before you break the lenses. But now looking at your optical qualities, that's what you can decide. Probably your, 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 your Trivex um, with a higher Abbey value might be a better option. So this is what you must decide what you want to do. But your 1.6s is perfect for rimless where you drill holes and it's perfect for nylons provided the lens is uh, uh, thick enough compared to ordinary CR39. So yeah, is your basically your catalog for lenses used in, in, in the optometric profession. Now, let's just go over here. I've mentioned that over there. We see how Abbey value affects visual acuity and your chromatic aberration. Now, you must note, um, uh, just remember one thing. The more you rotate your eyes off the optical center, the greater the, the transverse chromatic aberration. That's also because of the prismatic effect that you're looking through. The greater your prismatic effect there, the greater the split in your colors. Right. Um, okay. Are there any questions regarding this at the moment, or do you want to save them for the end? Do you want to save them for the end? I've muted everybody, so let's save it for the end. Okay, fine. Okay, now we go back to basics again. As you know, this uh, lecture is all about basics. Um, the difference between glass and plastic. Now, what we're talking about here is crown glass and ordinary plastic CR39. This is ordinary CR39, not high index, where you'll find glass is heavier, plastic's lighter, we know that. Ordinary CR39 is approximately 50% lighter. Uh, glass actually gives you better optics, but plastic gives you good, op good optics. But it's minimal, the R won't pick it up. Glass is less impact resistant, plastic more impact resistant. Um, glass is more scratch resistant, plastic is less scratch resistant. This is all pretty straightforward. Uh, glass less UV protection, plastic more UV protection. Uh, glass, great, uh, glass has a greater tendency to fog compared to plastic. In fact, the tendency for plastic to fog is about 60% better than crown glass. You know what I mean by tendency to fog? In other words, now, let's say it's in winter. You're wearing a mask. Uh, well, that's, that's part of it too. But besides that, let's say you leave your, your glasses in the car or your sunglasses in the car now, and, and your car's parked outside. This is just an example I normally use. Now, when you get into your car in the morning, inside the car is hot. Now, so inside the car is cold. Your body is hot. So when you put your glasses on, the difference in temperature, the glasses are getting mist up. Now, if, the, if, you, if your glasses are plastic, the tendency to fog is going to be much less. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, glass has less light transmission, which is about 1% less than ordinary um, CR39. 
There's greater reflection because glass has a higher refractive index. And with plastic, there's less reflection due to the refractive index. And an important thing to remember here, glass is more affected by half-flying, uh, high-velocity particles. Now, example, I, I've put welding over here. Now, you get some of these people who do welding with the oxyacetylene torch, and you get those sparks or if they're using angle grinders, and you get those sparks. Now, if you're wearing glass, those sparks, pit, they pit the glass lenses. If you're wearing plastic, it's less effective because those sparks from the angle grinder or the welding there bounce off. They bounce off. Now, I know normally what they use for safety glasses, yeah, they would use uh, polycarbonate, yeah. And when it comes to tinting, you're really limited with your tints compared to plastic. Where now I'm talking now about ordinary CR39, you're basically unlimited with your tints. Now, I know all of you are familiar with this. Um, this would have been more for frontliners if there are frontliners in the practice. So it's just to give you a good indication the difference between the two materials. Um, I'm just looking over here. Huh? Oh, okay. Uh, I was just looking at something over here that I wanted to know. Okay. Right, so this is all pretty straightforward. This is back to basics. And these are things that I'm sure all of you are very familiar with. Now, lenses of positive power compared to lenses of negative power. You're all familiar with this, but I'm just uh, reinventing the wheel over here in case you didn't know this, you know, just in case. Lenses of positive power, they're thick in the center. As you can see, thick in the center, thin on the edges. Lenses of negative power, thin in the center, and uh, thick on the edges. You get against movement if you're doing a, a lateral transverse test, and with movement when you're doing um, the transverse test. Now, of course, you may think, oh, man, I'm so trivial with this. You know what I mean? You think, oh, but everyone should know that. Well, I have you know there are some people who didn't know that. Uh, we know that lenses of positive power converges light, that diverges light. Uh, lenses of positive power magnify, lenses of negative power minify. Uh, that corrects hyperopia, and lenses of negative power correct myopia, which we're all familiar with. This creates a, a real image, that's a virtual image. And lenses of positive, positive power offer a smaller field of view that offers a larger field of view. Now, obviously, you'd think that this is pretty straightforward. But um, all of this here, if you think about it, is related to dispensing. Especially of progressive lenses. And no, no, I'm, no, no, I'm not going to get to that yet. We're just talking ordinary single vision lenses. This all relates to dispensing. Now, we all know that um, our power is in the minus, the edges are thicker. And the same thing with this over here when it comes to um, um, uh, plus lenses. So now this is all in the introduction stages. Now, if you didn't know the differences over here, then um, when you practice in optometry, I think you should be shot. I don't think you would be uh, you wouldn't be here. Uh, so, as we're saying, we're doing dispensing 101, so we're just going back to basics. So, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. And uh, lenses of positive power that I've already mentioned over there, that's pretty straightforward. And um, we're talking about a plus power lens. Now, if you're looking at a plus power lens, uh, if you're talking about field of view, um, there's your plus lens over here. And if you follow a ray going through, you'd think you would have a large field, but you actually don't. Your field is actually minified. Things are magnified, but your field is minified. So as we all know, you magnify something, your field of view becomes smaller. And uh, if exactly the opposite when it comes to lenses of negative power, there you think that your uh, field is over there, but your actual field, you get a wider field. 
You get a wider field. And when you ask a question in our knife, anyone can answer it. Uh, you can I'll answer this. Afterwards. No, what I'm saying, they can hear me now. Mm -hmm. And when you ask the question over here, um, it also might be a stupid question. Why is it that, um, can you explain to me scientifically or optically why lenses of positive power give you a smaller field and lenses of negative power give you a wider field? I'm going to put that question to the, to the, the audience here and um, uh, I want to see if anyone can answer that. Okay. So I'm jumping in here with limited optical knowledge, but... <laughs> This you're, is a, this is important. You're, this, you're not done. This is important with um, the habits of a myope and a hyperope and how um, the eye movements yeah, are, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. why I've mentioned the progressives and how lazy the eyes are to be in a regular versus a short corridor. So these are all related in the basics to do with that. Now you're going progressive. No, now, no, no, now, no, now no. you're going advanced. <laughs> but I'm going in field of view. Okay. That's all related to field of view. Yeah, but the question is why? How does it work? It's pretty simple, but um, uh, basically I'm testing your knowledge. I should have put that in the MCQ. So what's the question again? Can you show me optically why a lens of negative power um, gives a wider field and a lens of positive power gives a smaller field? We can all see it. We can see plus lenses it's magnify and we can see minus lenses minify with a wider field. Can you explain to me what happens? Yeah. Okay, that's just a, a food for thought, okay? Do you uh, know the answer? Yes, I do. <laughs> well, I hope I do. No, I don't. I'm hoping someone here can tell me. Okay. I think I'm nearly finished now. Okay, and as we all know now, okay, now this is pretty straightforward. Uh, this was more for the, the frontliners. If they are frontliners, they might want to know why is it that plus lenses do this and why is it minus lenses do that. So uh, for the optoms, yeah, just in case you didn't know, <laughs> if I take the lens, uh, the, 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 the refractive power of the eye to be 60 diopters, that's normally our reduced eye. This is the emetropic eye, assuming axial length is correct. Light will come in, refract and focus on the, on the, the phobia. So that means an emetropic eye and the power is 60 diopters. Now, when it comes to the hyperopic eye, the power of the eye is too low. It's only 57. So that means it will push the focus back. So as you can see here, a patient is long-sighted, power of the eye is less than 60. So example here, it could be 57. And in the case of the myopic eye, the power of the cornea is too strong. Instead of being 60, it is now 63. So now, how do we correct for this? It is simple arithmetic, simple arithmetic. So plus three, so it was 57, so we're adding plus three of plus power, it brings it up to 60, and light focuses. Now, as you'll notice here, I'm excluding vertex distance. Um, I don't want to complicate things too much for now, but I, um, everyone listen, listening knows exactly what I mean. And in the case of here with the cornea being too strong, we're adding a minus 3, so to be 63 plus minus 3 will give me 60. So this, this is more for the frontliners and those of you, uh, listen, I'm sure you're familiar with this. So what we've discussed over here is back to basics, what's available, and the characteristics of lenses, and, um, um, and that probably concludes my discussion today, which I was exactly on point.